Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to uh, our weekly update here at Prince of Peace. Uh, it's a beautiful day out there today, but uh, just a little breezy. So uh, for those of you who like golf, that might be a little difficult, or biking, that might be a little difficult today, in one direction for sure. But uh, God's blessed us with a, a beautiful day. We were able to get our lawn cut here this week, and things look great out here. So I hope you're enjoying the day, and uh, whenever you're watching this, I hope that uh, you are with us in prayer always. So speaking of prayer, let us begin with prayer as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us and, and this parish family. We ask you to continue to guide us. We ask for your help with all of those who are struggling in our parish, so many who are struggling health-wise, for all those who are have been diagnosed with COVID-19, that the symptoms that they have may not be serious, Lord, and that they, the healing process for them may be quick. We pray for our families, that we may be able to live in harmony and for those who have lost loved ones, especially those who have lost loved ones recently and are feeling the pain of that loss, that you can fill the void that they have, Lord, in their hearts with your love and your peace. Please, Lord, help us always to continue to do your will in our lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, speaking of illnesses, and we, we do have a lot of parishioners who are struggling, so I hope you can pray for them. But we do have, I would say, around 10 parishioners now who have been tested positive for COVID-19. Most of them have been, have healed already. Um, and they're, and I will say this about these people is that um, most of them, well, I'd say all of them, no one has had any serious conditions. And uh, I would say for the most part, there has been, uh, at least they've been home. They have not been hospitalized. So they may be feeling pretty punky for a day or two or a week, but uh, at least nobody's been hospitalized and we are grateful for that. So again, we want to stress that the governor has an emergency order in effect. We have signs on the doors. So when you enter, uh, a face mask is required. We will take your temperature. Uh, there are exceptions to the governor's order for medical reasons, so if you qualify for one of those reasons, and we will not ask you, uh, you would be exempt from wearing a mask in here. So we do have, I would say, a handful of people at every mass that um, don't wear a mask, and we trust that those are very legitimate reasons. We don't question people. We trust people. But the more people that wear masks in here, the more protected we all are from this illness, and we will continue to try to be as safe and as sanitary as we possibly can in this facility. So we hope that when you enter here that you feel safe and that you can worship without having to worry in the back of your mind about, well, gee, there's too many people here. I might get sick. I hope that that is not the case for anybody when they come into our place of worship. Uh, two weeks from today, we will have our Red Cross blood drive here. And I just checked this morning. It runs from 12.30 to 5, uh, by the way. We have 12 spots left for donors. Nine, er, nine which are considered Power Red donation donor spots. And what Power Red donation is, is that it just takes the red cells from your blood and it returns the plasma and platelets to you. But you, to qualify for that donation, you must be A negative, B negative, or type O. So those are the only three uh, types that will qualify for that type of donation. 
it shouldn't take any longer than a regular donation. So in terms of time, it shouldn't take any more time and you won't feel any different. It's just a different type of donation. So if you're able to do that, please check out um, the website at the R at Red Cross. We do have three spots left for regular donors. So if you want to look there, and uh, again, the date is September 16th, and it does spe specify Prince of Peace. So if you go to the Red Cross website, hopefully you can fill in and we can have all these spots taken in the next week or so so that we know that we'll have all the donors that we need for September 16th. And we appreciate all of you who have signed up already so much. You will be giving the life, the gift of life to those who um, need it the most with your donation. Our mass count last week was 447. <clears throat> and the week before was 464. The week before was 439. So we are in that same range pretty consistently right now. This is Labor Day weekend coming up. So I'm not hoping or I guess not thinking there'll be a lot of uh, people here this weekend. There might be a lot of people traveling for one last time. Schools did start up this week, even you know, virtual, but you're still in school. So God bless all the children, all you young people who are back in school. And I hope that you can have, even in these kind of conditions, a good school year that you can learn. Uh, that's what it's all about is learning. And uh, God, God willing, we will have our catechism classes beginning the first Wednesday in October. So we uh, are hopeful and we will have them here. So we'll gather everybody together. But the most that we'll have here at any time is about 35 kids. So with as big a facility as we have, we will be very spread out. And I think it'll be very safe. So hopefully it'll be time that you can spend with your friends, for one, but also to learn more about Jesus and how Jesus fits into your life every day, not just Sundays or not just once in a great while, but every day. So that's what we're hoping for. And uh, God willing, if things stay the, the way they are, we will be meeting the first Wednesday in October. I just want to talk a little bit about the seminarian collection. We had Nicholas Delflug here about a month ago now, not quite a month ago, and he talked about his experience as he enters his second year of the seminary. Uh, we have had uh, 120 donors from the parish donate $7,540 to the seminarian collection. And that's wonderful. For all of you who have donated so far, thank you very much. Just as a comparison, last year we had 120 donors at this point, the same amount of donors who donated $6,240. So we're actually up a little over $1,000 from last year. And uh, if you're interested, all you need to do is you can just on an envelope, write seminary and collection and put it in the basket and we will make sure that it gets to the diocese uh, for the seminarians. So. There, the time has not ended for that. You can donate any time, but uh, just on a blank envelope, if you write seminary and collection, we will make sure it gets to the diocese for that purpose. We did have our uh, trustee election last week for our treasurer, trustee, treasurer trustee. And uh, we had Teresa Williams and Betsy Holkamp as the candidates. And the final tally was 178 votes for Teresa Williams and 83 votes for Betsy Hocamp. Now, Betsy is and her husband, Sam, are new members. They lived in Appleton, actually. And I worked with Betsy at St. Mary in Appleton. I was uh, on the staff very briefly uh, before I was assigned here. And Betsy was, I believe, the, I think her title was the Family Life Director or something like that. Um, but she is a wonderful young lady with wonderful ideas. So I am sure she will help our parish in the future. And we thank her for running for the position. And we congratulate Teresa. She's been very active. Her and her husband have been very active in the parish for a long time. And she'll be a great trustee for this parish. Uh, we need people who are passionate about the parish and who can be able to work and help me on the financial side. So we're really grateful and blessed to have Teresa in that position for the next two years. This weekend, we will 
conclude the Preble Hive collection that we have out in the gathering space. If you haven't seen what's out there right now, it's worth a drive over just to look at all of the things that have been donated so far. And we'll take donations up through Sunday this week. So I'm hoping a lot more people will bring more items, but uh, I think they'll be very impressed over at, at the Hive at Preble High School with what we bring over there next week. I am so grateful to all of you for what you do for those young people that are struggling financially and are unable, their families are unable to, to have just the basic necessities of life. So please, if you can, if you haven't already, if you can bring uh, some items this weekend, that would be great. And for all those who have brought stuff in, uh, it's very impressive. Thank you all for what you do. The yoga that we have had out in the, uh, on the lawn on Saturday mornings at 8.30, Yoga for Christ with Katie Hansen, uh, was supposed to end this last Saturday, but it's been a big hit. We've had 15 to 20 people attend every class. And uh, Katie, we'll take a break this weekend for Labor Day, but we will resume classes uh, the first Saturday, the next Saturday in September, which I'm sure is that the 12th? I'm not sure. Um, but we'll resume them at 8.30 in the morning, 8.30 to 9.30, weather permitting. And uh, if it does get crummy out or too cold, I'm, we will put a, we'll have a post on our Facebook site prior to the time of the yoga on that Saturday morning and just say, look, we're going to call it off because it's not very pleasant out here. So um, for all of those of you who have come, I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I've gotten all sorts of positive feedback from those who have been there. And if you haven't attended, and I might try this yet, I, I'm still trying to work up enough courage to do this, but uh, I hope at some point I try it. For those who have, who have been here, they say it's a great workout, and I think I might have to try it. I might be sore for the next month, but uh, if I give it a shot, I hope I just don't hurt myself too seriously. But thank you to Katie for her volunteering her time and her talents for the parish, and I just hope that you all enjoy that uh, the fact that we are able to offer this. Again, we are still offering the Breaking Bread booklets. Those are the booklets that were in the pews. If you would like one or two for your family, you are certainly welcome to take them, and they are yours to keep, so you take them home, and you can bring them back for Mass so that you can follow along just as you would on a Sunday if we had the books in the pews. But we cannot keep them in the pews, so they are yours to keep. We have placed our order for next year's Breaking Bread booklets already. So I think what we might be doing, and we've discussed this, is we might offer them <clears throat> for sale instead of putting them in the pews uh, for a donation of $7 or so, somewhere in that range. That's about what they cost us per book. So uh, more details on that to come in the future as we get down the line here and closer to the end of the liturgical year in November to see uh, if we can put books in the pews. I doubt we'll be able to, but if we can, great, we'll have them in the pews. If not, then we will offer them for sale instead of just keeping them bunched up here. So we are doing our best to make sure we can uh, accommodate you with the Mass and that you can follow along and still we can keep this facility safe. I didn't ask my producers here, Carla and Tim, be prior to this, but I'm going to talk about the Virgin Mary statue that's usually in the back corner here, but right now it's over here on the side. It's on the left side of the altar if you're sitting in church. And uh, we have the candle here and flowers here. Um, oh, way to go, Carla. Good. Or Tim, that's good. Thank you. She's going to stay there. We are not going to put her back in the corner. I've been uncomfortable since I got here that we would have the statue out here for certain events. But then uh, after a week or even after like the month of May when it's the month of Mary or the month of October, which is the month of the rosary, that uh, we put her back in the corner. And uh, I think we need to have her out here visible for everybody. So we're going to keep her here. And uh, hopefully we'll have a more permanent stand for her and for the candle 
sanctuary candle that's with her and for flowers as well. So I hope that that's not too upsetting to people. I've heard a lot of people say that it's great that she's more visible out here than being back in the corner. So I just wanted to let everybody know that this is our intention is to keep her up here permanently and make a spot that's reserved for her just to the side of the altar. Finally, next Monday is Labor Day and we will close the office for Labor Day just like a lot of other businesses are closed on Monday. We also will not have the church open. So this will be the second day since the COVID-19 pandemic hit that we will not have the church available for people to come and pray. And I, I guess I need to stress this, and probably not to you people, but to hopefully people who may not be aware that the church is open every day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for prayer. So you can come in here by yourself, have a seat, spend some time with Jesus and get a chance to just be quiet with him and let him speak to your heart. We've had a lot of people who come in here on a daily basis or just once in a while and we'll spend time in here for 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is, and be able to connect with Jesus in a way that you can't at Mass or um, when there are big crowds here. It's very quiet, very uh, peaceful in here. So hopefully you'll take advantage of that when you have some free time. If you just come in here and spend some time with our Lord in prayer, that's what it's for. And speaking of time with Jesus and prayer on Friday, we will have our diocesan holy hour at 9 a.m. from 9 to 10. So we will expose the Blessed Sacrament on the altar. Uh, we have some readings. We have benediction with... Uh, the Blessed Sacrament. So again, another hour of prayer time with Jesus where you can talk to him and give him all your worries, all your fears, all your anxieties that you have in your life. So please uh, consider joining us Friday at 9 a.m. for Holy Hour. Okay, I think we're good here for this week. As always, I say this, we, I pray for everyone every day. I hope that you and your families stay safe and healthy. We do our part here to make sure that that can happen if you do happen to be here. But please, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Please take care of this community as we continue to work our way through this illness. And we ask for God's support with all of those who are ill, for God's support for those who can have not been affected and can stay healthy. And we ask for support from God that we can help each other. So please, let's take care of each other the best way that we can by staying as safe as we can, but trusting in God also, that trusting that God will take care of us. And he will. He will take care of all of us. I hope to see you this weekend. If not, if you are enjoying time with your family, be safe, be healthy. And until we talk soon, next week, may God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.